Hey, Jim. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Olivia Newton 80s. What are you doing? Dance, dance, dance. Ooh, on the radio. I, I'm, work, I'm working hard over here. Cable Ooh. management. Wow. Mm. That's where can I ask? Pray tell. Where are you right now? You, do you like this office? It's kind of a new, fancier space that we're in. You know, I don't remember that office. I thought we no. paid for a different office. Oh, oh wait. wait what happened? Where are oh, you? Crap. Damn it. It's the green screen. The, you know. the gig is up, baby. If the gig is up, you know. And people who uh, have been following these episodes religiously, which should be our entire fan base, um, <laughs> of zero. Which is zero. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Um, they probably watched last week's episode and saw us talking to Andy Rush. And like usual, he is an inspiring man. And so I've been busy at work here in the office uh, trying to recreate some semblance of some of the pieces that we learned from him. So I can actually, uh, I will, we'll get the full tour here in a minute, but yeah, this is, this is a larger um, room next to our office that we really didn't have a whole lot of use for. We really, we felt like it would, it was high time to have a space to do some video production work. And so I started with painting the green screen and I recently blogged about that and, um, got some lighting in here, a camera equipment and that kind of stuff. So this is kind of the first trial run of actually, you know, giving it a go. So I'm playing the, around with the whole switcher the, stuff. The green screen is so tight though. Like yeah. even when you go back to the green, like there's mm -hmm. the painted wall, but for some of the way in which it just, it engulfs everything. You begin to understand how that whole chroma key works and everything. It's just mm -hmm. amazing. It looks great. Love it. Yeah. I, yeah, it came out really good. It that was probably one of the hardest things just because we did the paint, which I think is really useful. You know, Andy's point there was that fabric tends to wrinkle, um, you know, or you use the paper and that gets ripped or torn and you have to constantly replace it and it's just a pain in the ass. And so uh, he said, you know, we painted a wall. They actually painted two walls and, you know, and they were done, yeah. you know, it never wrinkles, you know, you can light it properly and it wor works really well. And so that's what we did. Now this was a gray wall before. So I ended up uh, taping everything off, sanding it down, um, covering up, a, patching a few holes and priming it first. So, yeah. I mean, there there's between, I think it was two or three coats of primer and then like two coats of green screen paint to get it all on. So it was several days worth of work. It was basically my Labor Day weekend. I had nothing else mm -hmm. going on. So I kept popping in here to do another coat of paint and that kind of thing. So, um, but yeah, it came out really well. I actually have another shot here. Um, turn the keyer off so you can see. So it goes edge to edge on this wall here. Um, yeah. But you can kind of get a sense when we've got some lights on there too. That was one of Andy's recommendations was that you light the wall so that you kind of remove any sense of shadows and problems there. So we've got two LED lights pointed at the wall and then these softbox lights pointed at me to light myself and then overhead microphone, camera in front of me. So, Beautiful. Yeah, you have the yeah. camera in front of you at also mm -hmm. an iPad, right? That's right. Yeah. So that device there, it's called Glide Gear, I guess, is a teleprompter. Um, so you can do the script reading and stuff. But I think the better idea of what, what we were talking about was being able to mirror your display onto the iPad so you can look right into the lens. You know, so if yeah. I switch back to here, you know, you really get a sense that I'm looking right into the camera, but I can talk to you because I can oh, see right. you right there in front of the um the iPad is reflected onto the teleprompter. And so that's worked really well for some of the, just the video conferencing that we've had, not even recording or doing any fancy production. But, you know, I think our idea, which I think was the right one, is that it makes a difference to be looking right into the camera at someone to really yeah. be able to stare into their soul. <laughs> so <laughs> the Interatron. The <laughs> yeah. Who is that? Errol Morris? Errol Morris. Yeah. Yeah. And it really works. It works super well. And like, it's the thing is, the difference is, you know, the background, like you don't think about it, like how much these small details matter, like mm -hmm. the changing of the background to something so clean, the looking into the eyes of the person you're dealing with. Now, 
you know, depending on your needs and your use case, it's not always necessary, but like seeing it dialed in, mm -hmm. it gives the whole experience a different, a different sense of uh, presence. And I think that's what's interesting, what we're doing, I think a little bit with the studio is experimenting with what that presence is. And it reminds me, it returns us to when we were exploring with DTLT today. Right. And we yeah. had like different shots and we did have, like you're controlling those shots right now, right? Like I am. it might be worth yeah. talking a little bit about how you're changing the chroma key and all that stuff. Cause there's a bit of a magic going on that you and Andy talked about last week. Well, I've got, I mean, there's so many different things going on because that's StreamYard where I'm switching the various shots for this recording. And we've talked a little bit about StreamYard. We think it's awesome yeah. for broadcasting out recording and sort of doing these podcast episodes super easy. Um, but I've also got the A10 Mini, which is that HDMI switcher. And so that's switching um, between these various shots. I have to turn the chroma key off for that second shot there. And I don't have any others. I, I had one other one that I was going to try and do, but I didn't have the right converter. So, But it's got four inputs for HDMI, and you can switch between them. So you can do the front on, the side view, or whatever. Or you could, for example, if I was sharing my laptop screen, I might... Um, do HDMI out from the laptop and into that. So then you yeah. can switch seamlessly between that because then you can do the picture in picture and that kind of thing as well. Um, so yeah, that's the HDMI switcher. But for the most part, if you are if you just have a single shot like this and you're doing green screen, once you've set that, you don't really have to touch it. So unless exactly. you're really producing a multi-camera thing, um, that seems to just work fine on its own. And that comes USB into the laptop and it's seen as a webcam. So StreamYard yeah. and anything else, you know, if it's a Zoom call, you, it would just be a Zoom call. But then StreamYard, I'm switching between these so we can do, you know, the the full screen view or, you know, picture in picture, um, side by side type situation. Uh, but that's a whole lot of <laughs> grabbing multiple <laughs> things and doing that kind of stuff there at the same time. The other thing I did take, uh, Andy was using one. We used this at the Domains Conference. Um, and it's that, what is it? The HD PVR Rocket. So yeah. that's this device. Let's bring it back here so it's in focus. Um, we use these at the Domains Conference. And it's HDMI in and then HDMI out. It's basically a pass through. But then you can put a flash drive on it and press the red button to record. And so it's basically an HDMI recorder, but it doesn't really do anything else to the feed. So I'm coming out of the switcher and into this thing first. So if I wanted to press this button, you can see it turns red. It's recording now. Now, it's not recording you because it's coming out of the switcher. So it would just be my video. So sure. this is good for standalone, like single videos that we might want to do. Like So again, if I had the teleprompter and I was doing a script or whatever the case may be, I just want to record a nice video on the fly, but it's picking up all the the chroma key settings and all that kind of stuff. So it would be a great looking video at the end of it. And then you hit the button to stop it. It flashes for a few minutes while it saves to the flash drive. <laughs> and now it, and now it's ready. I could take the flash drive out and I've got an MP4 file that I could upload to YouTube or do whatever I want with. So it is kind of that one button studio in that sense. If you have everything dialed in, you'd have to know how to use the switcher a little bit more in that case to make sure you got your green screen right. And I found um, there there's a whole software suite, ATEM software control, um, that kind of connects to the switcher to do some more things. So, you know, for example, to get this image to show up, you have to have the software. Um, but the yeah. actual turning, turning on and off of the chroma key is all right within the hardware. So it's almost yeah. like it takes the images from the software and writes them to the device. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's a lot. <laughs> it's kind of cool. Yeah, it's kind of cool. So, and then if I switch back to this shot, um, uh, let's <laughs> turn that off. I know, I got duplicate. I love that. that. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> it's kind of crazy. You'll Slide see the down. camera. The camera is actually a um, a Blackmagic Cinema 4K camera. So it's basically a D DSLR in some sense, but it is a video camera. So. Um, that's hooked up to the tripod sitting on the teleprompter there. Um, yeah. Great camera. And in fact, I can actually control some of the settings from that same ATEM software. So if I if it's something is out of focus, so for example, let me go back here 
because I do have the software open. I'll go back to the front screen. So before I was showing you this, but it was out of focus because it's holding focus in there. Um, yeah. Normally you'd have to be controlling the camera to adjust that, but if I hit the autofocus button. Ah, nice. Yeah. Now Just from your computer you're doing out. that. Exactly, yeah. So you can adjust that. You can do sort of exposure controls in here if it was too bright or too dark. So you do have some control of the camera itself directly from the software. And that's because it's a black magic camera as opposed to, you know, anything else, which would just be an HDMI feed. It can actually do yeah. a two way, you know, talk with the data there, which I think is pretty cool. So, and yeah. then the, what else? Um, the microphone is a Rode video mic. Andy had recommended the Rode wireless, which is a lapel mic, and we'll probably get some kind of lapel mic system. But I really liked the idea of these shotgun mics. It's out of the way. I'm not clipping anything to my yeah. shirt or dealing with anything like that. I think on the fly, we could probably get away with two people talking with a single mic up here, but we'll have to see. Um, so I think that's the question mark. But you know, it picks up really good audio. And, you know, when you're looking face on, you don't see it at all. And so yeah. I don't have anything clipped to my shirt. I don't have to deal with any wires or anything like that, which I love. I actually, your audio is feeding into these AirPods. So those are wireless as well. So I don't have anything yeah. attached to me, nice. which I like. Yeah. So, so that's pretty cool. Um, that cool. I think that's it. The lighting, the cameras, all that. It's not too crazy. Um, I, we do have, I don't know if you can, um, if you can see this on here. No, you can because it's not high enough. Let me, let me move the camera so you can get sure. the full view here. But we actually have a, a lighting truss that goes along the edges of the room. And that's so that we can hang lights from the ceiling. And so that will be for, you know, he talked about wall washer lights. And so I think there's a little bit more work that we could do to light the background some, as well as it just looks really cool. <laughs> so let me turn the camera here. Um, yeah, I want to see this. And I actually, I'll lean over here real quick and switch to a solo view. You can see that. Nice. Um, yeah. So if I move the, oops, sorry. It's all right. So there's the lighting truss over there. And yeah. It runs all the way along the room and then comes down. So it's just on these really large tripods. Yeah. I'm probably super quiet because it's a far away from the microphone, but. No, we can hear you fine. Yeah. So if I move just a little more, you can kind of see the camera's view there. There's the, there's the lights pointing at the green screen and the yep. other one's pointed at me itself. But yeah. This, if I could get it a little wider, I would. I kind of, I regret, this is a 10 foot truss and I think we could have gone 15 um, and gone a little bit further up against the walls just because I think you wanted a little bit more wider space, but we'll see. Um, but yeah, that's for hanging lights. And then you can kind of see the camera. It's got yeah. a really big, it's got a really big LCD on the back of it. If I go out of the menu here, you can see you get a really nice preview uh, yeah. on the back of it as well. You do. But yeah, that's just, you know, right here on the teleprompter and then pointed in there. And then if I come over, I'll give you a close up view of the iPad and there's StreamYard running on the iPad. Yeah, there it is. So, so my view of that is reversed, but I can actually see directly onto it. Nice. And it's a pretty it's a pretty clean desk you have there. Record yeah. button and the A10 mini. Yeah, and you know, in the recorder, you wouldn't always have to have it there, but it's kind of nice to have it. Um, yeah. Exactly. So That's nice. So yeah. where where are you in the in the kind of like process? Is that like do you feel like do you need more? Or do you feel like, no, this is kind of where we're at? Uh, like where Andy was, we're kind of pretty close. Yeah, at this point. no, for, for sure. I think the next thing, so I think for single recording, like one person needing to record in front of a screen, I think this works really well. Um, yeah. I think once it comes to multiple people, we'll have to think through microphones and audio a little bit more. 
So that's one piece of it is, you know, when you get back, I know we're going to want to be able to do a recording of both of us kind of, you know, sitting in here talking and, uh, you, you know, or, you know, Meredith and I talking through something. So like, what does that look like? Does the, does the shotgun mic work well for two people? Do we yeah. need to have sort of, I was looking at, there are some, um, you know, like wireless mic systems where you have like four different packs or something. So, you know, that might be overkill. We'll have to see. So I think playing around with the audio with multiple people would be one thing. Um, and once you get into that, you think about like audio monitoring because, you know, I can hear you because I've got my headphones in. But if Meredith and I were both talking to you, how is she going to hear you? You know, the reason I'm, I'm doing right. headphones is so that there's no echo in the space. I can hear you directly through the headphones, but if she needs it as well, you know, you remember at DTLT, we used to have a box that split out and we actually yeah. we just ran wires up there. You could, there's some wireless in-ear type stuff now um, that's fairly reasonable. So we could do something like that where everybody has their own headphones, they plug them in, they can turn the volume up and down and, and they can hear everything that's coming through the, the broadcast. So I think something like that would be important too if you had multiple people. The other thing, and I know you'll love this, that I want to play around with is capturing stuff. So, yeah. you know, I know you've been playing a little bit with capturing like Atari and VHS tapes, and you're, you're doing it mostly from an archival sense too, but I think just for fun, like playing stuff on stream. So I played a little bit with Twitch, but I want to roll a pinball game in here and stream it out. Yeah. I want to I want to bring Miss Pac-Man in and connect it to the switcher and have yeah. people be able to see me playing it and you know, be able to do that. And the space is big enough that we can do that. And we've got the structure in place to be able to light things really well, which I think opens up a lot of alt uh, of opportunities. We've got a GoPro that we could clip on somewhere and do like zoomed in shots. So when I think about like repairing video games and things like that, um, I'm yeah. really interested in that. I've actually been talking to um, my daughter's teacher you know, um, she's actually, she's at a private school and they're meeting in person, but of course they can't have any visitors. You know, the, the kids basically stay in the classroom and, you know, no parents are allowed to, to visit or whatever. And, and they actually said, you know, but if you're doing anything cool or, you know, you want to show something from your work or whatever, we would love you to zoom into our classroom That's and actually cool. do a demonstration. And, and he knows about what we're doing here. And he said, I don't know if maybe you had like an 80s video game that you wanted to show the insides of or something. And I was like, oh, yes. <laughs> so Robotron. <laughs> totally. Kids, this is Robotron. <laughs> exactly. We, we have to inspire the next generation, you know. Absolutely. <laughs> the robots uh, are coming. Kill them now. <laughs> That's right. So, yeah, that's my idea is that, you know, we could actually get them excited about like how electricity and circuitry works by opening up a Pac-Man or something and actually yeah. allowing them to see the insides of it. And I could do it all from the studio and just quickly roll the game in and set up the lights and the cameras and everything to really have different shots. So there's a lot of opportunity there. And it's this room is really accessible. Big doors accessing the space, lots of open space to move things around. Um, so that's definitely yeah. something I'm interested in as well. And we were talking a little bit about furniture and what furniture for the space might look at. And I don't know if you have any ideas about what furniture makes sense. I'm just using a desk that we had next door right now, but I think we would probably want something maybe a little bit more flexible, you know, just in terms of the, the actual furniture of the space. I think, I mean, I think we already talked about something akin to what we had at UMW with those flexible butterfly tables. Those uh -huh. were super nice, the rolling chairs, but also some sort of maybe couch, um, should mm -hmm. there be a, cause there's plenty of room in that space. Now, if you're bringing right. in other things, maybe, maybe not, but like even in the other space next door, which was the kitchen space, like there's, there's a lot of flow over. So I yeah. also like the idea of if you're gonna have a group of people there, although you don't mm -hmm. really do that right now in this era, um, but <laughs> I do think even just roll of chairs and the butterfly tables is more than enough. Yeah. Some kind of like, like you're saying, like studio lounge type furniture to record yeah. from just something a bit more casual than tables and chairs, right. That people are sitting at. So yeah, yeah like, it, it may not, it may not be a cuddle couch in the coronavirus era, uh, yeah. but you could have some like, you know, some smoking chairs or something. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> just a comfortable chair. 
Yeah. Maybe a lazy have, boy, you know. And, and you I'm, have two yeah. of them. You can move them hopefully easily out. Should you have to bring right. in the the pinball, whatever. But like, yeah. I love that idea. Yeah. Take another yeah, trip down to Richmond. Yeah, exactly. And and again, there's so much space. It's so far back here that you could just keep furniture up against the walls and then bring it into the camera view for whatever setup, you know, you stage and set up the way that you want it to be. The other thing that I didn't even point out um, is I did mount a TV on the other side of the wall and I can see uh, what's coming out of the switcher through there. So after it comes out of the PVR rocket recorder, it goes into the television. And uh -huh. so that way, I know that I'm on camera, I'm not off to the side, whatever. It's not showing you, it's just showing exactly what's coming out of the switcher, but I can see the chroma key settings, so it's been good to dial some of that in. So uh, it's kind of sort of a nice fail safe for me to know that everything is looking good and everything is still working properly. But again, you know, if I didn't have the teleprompter, this is how I'd be looking at the stream. Yeah, I'd, the I'd be time. watching you. Uh, up there and I'd probably have the computer up and you'd be, you know, looking up my nostrils the entire time, but it's that <laughs> I <come> down here. <laughs> so, I'd be like, why isn't yeah. Tim looking at me? What right. is, what's <laughs> wrong with me? What did I do yeah. to Tim? Yeah. One interesting thing though, that I found was that like things looked so good up on the TV and they were not looking good on my computer. I was kind of like, I, like the colors looked really good. And then I would look on the computer and I was like almost orange colored. And I, I was like, yeah. this doesn't make sense. And I kept thinking it was a problem with the computer, but it wasn't, I think anyway, I'm, I'm no expert. We'd have to pull Andy back in here to know for certain. But what I think is that the TV has different codecs on it and it's compensating for things to balance out the colors and make everything look really good. And I think the computer was just getting a raw feed from HDMI and it wasn't wow. doing anything to it. So, you know, on your TV, you've got like movie settings and gaming and all that, like yeah. it's got processing inside of it to make images look really good. Whereas on my computer, I had to dial in all the colors. So in fact, I'm I'm not perfectly happy with it, but I, I could do a couple more adjustments in there, but I think it looks okay. It definitely looks a lot better than it did before. But in turn, on the TV, I'm much more washed out now. Like I, I look ah, like way, I look much I look much brighter up there than I do on the computer. But I know the computer is what's recording. It's what's going out to Streamyard. So that's sort of that's the yeah. the the true answer. And the reason I figured that it's the TV and it's not anything about the device or my computer or anything is I took that same HDMI out signal and I used a capture card to bring it into the laptop instead of using USB, same image. Uh, I was still getting, I was still looked orange there. So the same thing going to the TV when it comes into the computer, it's not the same. So I think that the TV is actually adjusting colors on the fly, which makes a lot of sense. I mean, you yeah. know, that's, that's what TVs do. They've got codecs inside and they're processing and they're cleaning things up to make thing, an image look really good. And I think typically what looking good means on a TV means making things really bright and crisp and, and all that kind of thing. So yeah. I had to make a lot of adjustments in the software, you know, to make the camera look really good for the stream too. So Interesting. I thought that was it. Yeah, it, it was really throwing me off because I thought, okay, there's a problem with USB or there's a problem with the device or what there's something about the capture is not right. It, Cause I was like, it, it should just look really good right out the gate. And uh, it ended up, I just had to adjust a lot of settings on the camera to dial those in. So now yesterday you were having issues with the sound syncing, but today that's not an issue at all. Did you do mm -hmm. anything? I did. So um, one thing is that I updated the firmware on the a 10 mini. Um, they a couple months ago issued an update where they added audio delay settings into the software so uh -huh. you can actually take the mic feed and you can say i need a three second delay on it or a three frame delay so i did that um i had tried doing what andy had recommended which was plugging the mic directly into the camera um, i still think that's probably the cleanest but at the same time the microphone was really quiet when i did that and it may be that i just don't understand the black magic black magic cinema camera settings yet, but I had it dialed all the way up and I was making a lot of adjustments. Um, I, I, it hasn't been completely reliable. So instead I did go into the mic input on the ATEM switcher, but I have the three second delay in there as well. And so that's what it's doing. Um, and it also then allows me to, you know, the software itself, I can monitor um, 
the audio levels in there to make sure that things aren't too loud or too soft and that kind of thing. It's also got processing and this is kind of trippy um, because my voice will actually change. I won't be able to hear it, but you will. So they've got, you know how there's equalizer settings in iTunes and other places? Sure, yeah. Um, where you can do stuff like that. So the software has that kind of dynamic equalizer type stuff too. And so I can actually make adjustments to like add more like bass to my sound. So if I move some of these things around, I assume my my voice might be changing here. Yes, you're mm -hmm. like deep throat yeah. right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then I can turn it back off and I'm normal. But if you had monitoring headphones into where you were listening to what you were saying in there, you could adjust all of those dials to get like the bass and the treble all really good in there. And that's all processing within the software before it goes out to the feed. So that's awesome. Yeah, do they have like a Donald cool. duck voice? So you can do the duck voice, <laughs> right. like disco duck. Yeah. Well, a bad, like with the deep throat, with the deep throat that you could really like, like, like modulize your voice. And then you could use the green screen to get like a shadow look. So it's like one of those interviews where you can't see the, the person. <laughs> that would be awesome. That'd be I great. Like, can go. <laughs> yeah. Notes from the Reclaim Hosting Underground with exactly. Black Hat. <laughs> yeah, undercover, undercover Black Hat researcher. That would be awesome. Kim Droom. <laughs> Kim Droom back on the case. Yeah, that's wow. right. I tell so, you though, yeah. that came together pretty quick. You said by the end of the week, I'll have it together. And true to your word, we have you, a studio. The painting took the longest because you got to wait for it to dry, um, you know, and you've got to tape everything off. There's still a layer of green dust everywhere that I've, I've got to run a vacuum on it on it all. Oh, and the other piece of it, too, and it's not really affecting things right now, but I think ultimately we do want it is some blackout curtains. Um, yeah. This is a our office is a storefront area. And so the front wall is all glass windows and, and metal and stuff. And so. Uh, you know, I'm looking right out to a door and it's, you know, full glass floor to ceiling. So, you know, when it's sunny, that could be a, a huge issue. They've, yeah. There are some old, old blinds that are falling apart here from the previous tenants. And I think we just want blackout curtains to cover the entire space, not just from a security standpoint, but also just from a lighting standpoint. That way, that's not even a factor. So that would be another thing. But I've got to figure out, I mean, it's a good, it's probably 16 feet you know, edged wall to wall. So you're going to have to mount things along the way to hold it structurally. Yeah. It won't be enough to just have two brackets on either end, or I think it'll sag quite a bit. And, you know, there's nothing to mount to on the front because again, it's all glass. So what do you do? Like, yeah. So uh, up into the ceiling tiles almost, right? Which is. Yeah. Which is its hard. own challenge because they're just, yeah, they're, it's just a drop ceiling. So you almost have to go through that and see what, what yeah. structural stuff you have above it that you could use. Or I was thinking, I mean, at least on both corners in a closet situation, you almost have brackets that are held to the sides and, you know, a pole that sits inside those brackets. And I, yeah. I thought maybe you could use something like that. I think a lot of it will depend on like the weight of the curtains and that kind of stuff. So that'll be another piece of it too, for sure. But, um, you know, all very minor stuff. I, I think that the it's bones true. of it is already there and we can start playing around. And that's the, for me, the funnest part is just playing with this stuff and trying out different combinations and seeing what works and what doesn't. So what's the tally? What's the cost tally on the, on the studio? So by far the most expensive thing was the camera. Um, and so I had this camera, sorry, I turned that off for a second. So this camera over here is a uh, Panasonic Vixia or something. It's a decent enough camera, but um, I wanted to get a better one uh, yeah. for the video recording stuff. So, so I got the Blackmagic Cinema 4K and that was $1,300 just for the camera. Yeah. Um, you know, and it actually, it's like a DSLR. And so you have to buy a lens for it. So I had to get the lens and all that other stuff too. So, um, so the camera was the most expensive, everything else. It's like, you know, $50 here, a hundred dollars there. So I imagine in total, we're probably about somewhere between 2,500 and 3,000 for that's all amazing. of this. Yeah. Huh. And, yeah. I remember when we were doing the kit and the kit was, uh, you know, the camera, the one camera, one 
lavalier mic, not the right. software or anything like that. Mm -hmm. I don't know if we had a, a switcher. And the kit was like yeah. five or six thousand. Right. Right. Yeah. And we had to go and ask for money. Remember that? Like, and ultimately, mm -hmm. I think like university relations bought us the kit. Right. Like Kathy Derrick he found a way. Like, I don't know how we got the money for that. But that's and there's, and there's a few things that I'm repurposing here. So like I'm using my own laptop, you know, yeah. probably a, de a dedicated computer in the studio probably makes a lot of sense to, you know, yeah. if you've got one that can do all the streaming and all that kind of stuff. Um, I borrowed the iPad from the robot. <laughs> so there's that. Uh, I've got to go to Best Buy and grab a laptop uh, or sorry, an iPad to have in the teleprompter permanently. So, but we had that one on hand. And so I was like, all right, well, I'll go ahead and use that. So, um, so I'm repurposing those things. And then like the PBR rocket, like I said, we had already used it at the conferences. So we actually had a couple of them here in the space. And so, yeah. uh, you know, I, I grabbed that. I bought the A10 mini a couple months ago. And so, but even still, I mean, we're talking, you know, again, like, hundred dollars here, a hundred dollars there. Like the yeah. stuff has gotten very cheap. It's also gotten um, very accessible, you know, just like really user-friendly and accessible um, to be able to play around with this stuff, which is awesome. I agree. No, that's cool. Yeah. I appreciate the overview of, of your update on the, yeah. on the studio. It's, uh, it's amazing how quickly that came together. And I can't yeah. wait to start doing some of that streaming you said in the space. That's going to be sick. Yeah. I know. And it, I think, you know, like the idea of converting stuff and showing it off is just so cool to me. I just think yeah. like, you know, we've got so many cool old devices. We've got the select division. We've got Betamax yeah. players. We've got VHS. Yeah. We've got arcade games and pinball machines. And the idea of like grabbing those feeds and bringing them onto a stream in some way, I think is just super cool. So that's in part why I've been like so enamored with Twitch recently is that, you know, just the ability to show off stuff in, in almost like a real time way, which I think it's it's what we're doing now with DS106 TV. But the thing about Twitch that is interesting that we don't have with DS106 TV, it's that real time chat. It's that live yeah. feed. So you're actually interacting with your audience and they're like, well, what about this? Well, yeah, let me show you that. And it's like, yeah. sure, you could use Twitter. That's not really a great channel for that kind of thing. And so no. YouTube's got options like that too. But at the same time, YouTube, you run into copyright. Twitch, you run into copyright issues too on that kind of stuff. But you know, for whatever it's worth, it's that kind of real-time feedback loop that I think is for me like the real key with Twitch. And I think it's super cool to be able to like show something off and then interact with your audience and actually do stuff on the fly, which again yeah. makes the teleprompter crucial because on a lot of those streams, you look at it and the person's looking off to the side to read the comments and then they're looking back at the camera to talk and then they're looking back at the comments. Whereas like you could just again like look right at the at the yeah. camera and read the comments that are coming in and talk right to the people. So it's funny the Yestercades arcade in Red Bank, New Jersey, was has gotten onto Twitch and has had like you know Street Fighter two uh, battles and like really doing a good job of highlighting games in their collection and uh -huh. creating a little bit of a community and a buzz around some of that using the streaming stuff. It's like it's a layup and the yeah. fact of getting in there, like you said, and like integrating it with a, with a classroom to show them the guts of a, an eighties arcade machine is just magic. Yeah. And then of course the teleprompter and all that, like that'll be really useful for doing some better video type production for reclaim hosting. Yeah. So there, this does tie back to hosting too, not just arcade and, and silly fun stuff. But, you know, when we're doing tutorials, when we're, you know, wanting to do other types of broadcasts and things, it just makes it a whole lot easier to do that. When we talk about virtual workshops and the ability, yeah. you know, for someone to stand in here, put their slides up on the TV, stand in front of the camera and talk to it. I mean, I think in this, day and age, you know, with the with the virus, that stuff's only become more and more important. And so the ability to do it in a really professional way is exciting. And to, you know, yeah. not have to to spend a ton of money to be able to do that is super cool too. Yeah. And like we kind of reclaimed a little bit of of some of the the more exciting parts about the new building at mm -hmm. UMW that we couldn't do given yeah. the fact that we were on our way out or it just, you know, time and, and everything. But like we told ourselves that we would slowly get an office space like that and do stuff like that. And we yeah. have. Yeah. Cool. It's fun. <laughs>
<laughs> it's super cool. All right. Well, I think that covers it. Um, we'll have to get Andy back uh, here in the next yeah. couple of weeks to kind of get a sense from him on what are we missing? Um, you know, what could we, what else could we add? You know, I know he had, he had planned some changes as well and they were looking into things right now. This whole setup is 1080p or 1080. I, I can't remember the P's and the I's and all that stuff, but it's 1080 resolution. He had talked about like, that's what they're doing, but that they're thinking about 4k and what that looks like. Um, the A10 Mini does not do 4K, uh, but the camera does. So, you know, you could record a video in, in 4K. Um, you would have to add the chroma key after the fact. And so there's other kind of variables to that kind of thing, too. So I don't know if anybody wants to see me in <laughs> in that many pixels. <laughs> so, but that, I mean, that the fact that you're not 4K right now is remarkable because you're so damn right. sharp. Yeah. You yeah, know, it's I mean, like, it's, it's, a, it's a great camera, so it, it's sampling it down really well. And, you know, again, yeah, it, you know, it's strikingly good. It's a, yeah. it's a good shot. Oh, well, super cool. I'm, well, I'm looking forward. Yeah, well, you'll you'll be here to see it in a couple of weeks. And so we'll have to do another stream from the space, you know. We'll have to. Uh, yeah, it'd be cool. So, well, very good. Well, we'll cut this episode off then keep it nice, short and sweet, but uh, appreciate everybody uh, watching and checking it out and stay tuned for more like and subscribe. Smash that button. Smash it. <laughs> See y'all later. Bye.